Good morning, uh, everyone, and uh, uh, thank you very much. I want to thank you for this panel to invite you here. And uh, I think I consider myself uh, as a long time friend of the JETA, JETA Institute, and many people here. And uh, I, uh, I think the uh, Dr. Thomas uh, uh, actually for some of the uh, for this presentation. I, uh, I, I was thinking that um, I probably it's more useful for me to just just take up what he uh, pointed rather than just go to my own presentation here. But I probably use some of my uh, my uh, my points in the the first one, the first one, uh, I like to uh, respond to the MTT program in the way of, uh, of sharing the understanding of uh, the context. Uh, because of, we look for two terms here. One is we look for global, global development. So the global development is actually today we talk about is very different from the agenda, which we have been very much familiar with, uh, called country development. Because um, mm, the country development means that uh, when we have, when we have uh, this uh, 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 nation state, very traditional nation state, which is European created, as a European created. So you have you have been uh, you have been fighting to each other over decades, decades, uh, hundreds of years ago. Uh, that uh, coming to a very small, smaller state like German state, like mm -hmm. Dutch state, like Belgian state, like all different state. So build state, nation state. So nation state actually was the Mm, was the I would say was the legitimate for sovereignty, for boundaries, so the physical boundaries, sovereignty, and the national development. So national development. What the national development stated started, the look at not look at the global village, the not look at the, the the people as a global citizen. Look for the, it's my city, German city. Okay, I don't mind Netherlands. I don't mind. The, other countries, I don't mind uh, Russia, uh, I don't mind uh, Japan, China. So I'm Chinese. So when I promoted my country, and when I when I clean my country with pollution to Japan, okay, fine, it's not, it's, you know, it's, this is, there was the old issues. There was the, not treated, but yes, we have to use this concept of country, uh, sovereignty country, nation state, a national divide. So it seems that we're still using this. We still come to this stage, and the international development has been built on that kind of concept. Jetta, and BMZ, and even county Chinese for aid. So we all building on that kind of concept to support support what Japan has supported China for Chinese for China's national development. You know, this is a whole concept. And the, and the training program capacity. We talk about capacity building. So we talk about capacity transfer. Like uh, the young students coming to Japan and the, the young people going to G Germany. So you're going to transfer the capacity. How to develop Germany and how to develop Japan. So you keep in contact how we manage our country. So we now begin to uh, transfer the capacity to many other countries see how we transfer our country transformation, you know, how China transforms. This is the capacity. So from what MGT, MGT program the concept, now we'll see that that is the paradigm shift. The paradigm shift, if you go into the MGT program, so I'm not the, a nobody, but some of my staff were there, but I've been keeping very closely and uh, watching very closely. So if you look for that program, you find it. There was no, there was a little, there was a little continent that talked about how Germany 
divided apart. And how Japan is there. It's not based on that concept, but very often you find that the MTT program in DI talk about common challenge. Common challenge, everybody thinks common challenge. The environment issues, <coughs> many other issues. So this is called what I call not capacity building, not capacity transfer, but I call it to develop joint capacity. Joint capacity means that that's more inclusive, more inclusive. So this is the context that I like to just for, I, I like just comment first of all, before I go into other areas. And um, this is this is what we're looking for: rise the emerging power, the rise the source. So this is all about you know. And, uh, and that, is, uh, that is something which, uh, uh, from my from from the more emerging uh, parts perspective. Uh, and it's also for me, uh, I would also make a suggestion and recommendation to, uh, to, to, to our Japanese colleagues here, looking for JECA's intervention, for JECA's research agenda. So this is something which we should shift. And this is also what I, mm, I have repeatedly <coughs> suggest to our government <coughs> that we should not step in it's a traditional model. So we should join into a joint force to create new ethics, new global ethics. So this is something different from before, very different from before, that we tell you how China developed. And the Jap Japanese friends tell me how China, Jap Japan developed. So this is all. This is all. Because this creates problem. This creates problem for inequality. This creates problem for conflict. This creates problem for many other issues. So we need take. We need to take a common common challenge. This is what we come to the, uh, to the MGD. You know, MGD uh, looks universally so we challenge. So this is an area uh, I like to comment on. Uh, uh, Thomas, not Thomas, just uh, to uh, Secondly, uh, if, if we can, uh, if we if we shift to the to the capacity, and the capacity looks for the policy direction and uh, knowledge production, which I like to emphasize here, the knowledge production, and because knowledge mm, and to managing new new global government, a new global context. So new global context, as I mentioned requires a new capacity, new capacity. And the new capacity requires a new knowledge. So new knowledge means that we need different a different understanding. We need a different understanding on the issues. This is what I also called and what this is also what I mentioned a few years ago when I made a uh, speech in RDS at RDS uh, Institute of Development Study in the UK. And I call for reform of development studies. I said, come development study, uh, look for the agenda of 1960s, 1970s. It's not valid any longer. Our teaching program, our teaching program in the university. So we teach students gender issues. We teach, teach students all kinds of issues that are not relevant any longer. We need looking for new, new, new areas. We need to create new development study. So development study created in 1960s. They're very much the model of transforming uh, modernization model. It's very much modernization model, and it's very much based on this nation building and nation state. All this about uh, traditional concept. So we need we need to merge into a new area. This new area means global governance. Uh, what does it mean? Global issues. Global issues means everybody. Is. How we going to merge? How we create consensus? And how we going to create? Uh, Convergence. Convergence. And the rise of the source, this is good. The rise of the emerging powers are also good. But this can be bad. Not necessarily good, positive, 100%. And it can be very destructive if we take this kind of a narrow nation interest. So this is my interest. This is my Euro interest. This is German's interest. This is American interest. That's the reason why people feel feels Nervous about the American first. And from a narrow perspective, it is not wrong. And this is what Trump said okay, 
and the, the American force is my agenda, so I also like uh, you country to take your own interest. You know, that's what he said in the UN. And the, the wrong, it is wrong because it's so narrow. It is it's right to say this to its own people, to say, okay, I'm American, American first, I'm Japanese, I'm Japanese first, I'm Chinese, Chinese first. So the same is nothing wrong from a very narrow national interest point of view. It's nothing wrong. But it is wrong completely if we look for the common challenges we have. And we cannot do like this. We can't do like this. We cannot see. We have to see global first. We cannot see the American first, Japanese first, Chinese first. So from that point from New York, I would say the convergency is so important. It's not deep service. Convergence is not deep service. And divergence. Divergence, divergence is a real challenge. It's a real challenge because when you're looking for <coughs> political interest, geopolitical interest, economic interest, the social different interest, you look for different interests, it's so easy. It's so easy to create this divergence. So easy. And this divergence is driven by the self-interest. It's very easy. You know, and let's go very, very, very quickly. And the and this whole global, whole global system will be fragmented very easily. If you look for what just the uh, uh, Thomas mentioned that um, the issue of uh, uh, issue of uh, differences uh, uh, among the uh, among the source, uh, and also what I what I actually mentioned in India. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the weeks, three weeks. Three weeks. Four weeks ago in India, we uh, together uh, for the South Asian Times. Uh, meeting. So I chair that meeting. So I warned, I warned the people to say no different between China and India. And also, uh, as Thomas also mentioned that China's Delaware initiative and also the other initiative uh, uh, started by India, with uh, support of Japan. You know, I uh, and then I was not invited by the India friends during the meeting, they had a separate forum. Uh, I didn't know that forum, but had Thomas told me. And, and there will be another another panel section uh, where the India um, will have discussion, discuss this, uh, um, this, uh, Europe, uh, this uh, Asia African corridor. Uh, and I also looked for the, for the report uh, prepared by the India then. And I personally consider, and I said to the uh, to Thomas, competition it is necessary because competition create quality, and competition creates a leverage. Uh, because it, without competition, there's no leverage, and uh, competition also create quality. So you see, this high quality, and uh, other people say we need another high quality. So the competition create quality, and create very nice things, but. Competition should not become conflict, and uh, if competition becomes conflict, and then destroy everyone's <coughs> effort. And uh, therefore, um, within existing regional and global efforts, and the managing global governance is so important, and uh, so important in terms of reducing unnecessary conflict, and to, to to learn and encourage and the competition, possible competition. And this, this is what I see um, uh, from the from the from point of view of the world, from the <coughs> from um, what I call national interest to global interest. <coughs> it's very important. <coughs> and also another issue, <coughs> another issue uh, in terms of how to uh, how to nourish and support this global uh, governance. <coughs> The first one is um, it seems that we have to start from for more education based. Education based learning. Or learning education based and learning based capacity. And MG, MGG, uh, as you have seen from the from the little radio program, uh, the people coming together to share uh, their co their concerns and the challenges and also their values. And what I'm what I'm going to first to see looking at in back all that commercial that through the education. And we need also look at the higher education system. 
because of, um, after four years uh, university study and another two years master, another four years PhD, and many many of you have experienced this, as I experienced as well, that we need it. We need really policy, we really looking at that kind of revolution uh, within that system. Otherwise, it will be difficult to change people's mind. We all understand that this global system, uh, mainly through this university, almost 10 years university, high education system. So our high education system is still based on what I call traditional model, traditional understanding, traditional concept. And we need also put in that linkage between the, um, uh, between the policy level, MTG law, and DIE, if you look at that, what I call policy level, um, into uh, this education level. This, this, there is a gap. There's a gap. And, uh, and uh, lastly, I also like to take this point back to our region. And, Chicago, and we had uh, also Two days ago, we were in Russia. I think for the, mm, I think for our Korean friends and our Japanese friends also mentioned this university network. And remember, we didn't have time to discuss this university network. And I think for our region, East Asia, so we are very, very special because within the East Asia, uh, we have four countries, almost four countries, even five, even more than four countries. Uh, uh, now uh, are the development uh, assistant, assistance providers. So we are so we are providing development assistance in this region, in the North East Asian region and the East Asian region. So these two is sub region and also the big region and also Asian region and also global. Very special. So this means Japan, Korea, China, Russia, particularly for, for Japan, Korea, China. So three, three of us providing a system to sub-region, sub-sub-region, and the re whole region, Asia region, and the Pacific, Asia Pacific, and also globally. This is very, very special. And unfortunately, unfortunately, there is a Almost uh, no collaboration. A little, a little collaboration, or even no collaboration among us towards sub region, towards the whole Asia Pacific region. So, what, what we could do together, jointly? That is a big, big area. I think we need, as a city tank, you know, we're not working for the government. As a city tank, we need, we need to create some kind of a some kind of area where China, uh, Japan, and Korea, South Korea, we could work together to nurture this kind of conversion. And I was speaking to uh, Ms. Kidano in, in, in Russia, in Moscow, already very briefly. I said, look, mm, I have observed, I have observed how uh, Jeka, 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 uh, does in Africa and how the Jeka did in China. I had initiated a smaller project with our African office in uh, in Addis Ababa uh, a few years ago. And we tried to do something <coughs> with China, so, but we were not able to continue. We started a little bit in you know, comparison. And I personally worked for Jeka and Jebik, 1980s, uh, 1990s, 90, many projects in China. I personally worked for directly with Japanese experts together. So this is my personal experience. So that is very different from what Jeka's project in Africa. This is what I said to Mr. Kidano. I said, look, you know, we need to understand this. Why? That and we have also conclusion that Germany, uh, the Japan, and the Japanese and the Japanese ODA has a significant impact and has made a significant contribution to China's development for the last 30 years. No doubt. We all understand this in China. 
you know, not only public, not only expert perspective, also public. We know this, like in China, like Japan, China, uh, friendship, hospital, and the road, and, and, high, uh, and the, the highway from airport to city, and many things. You know, we all know everyone knows this. And the Japanese in one of the centers, everything. So it's very and also, if you look for the for the project of Jetta, uh, supporting the Guizhou power induction project, what I have worked for that project was interesting. That um, when the Chinese uh, Chinese local officials asked Jetta to see, we need understand, we need understand the, the rural, uh, what is the rural development country in Japan. And the, the mission leader is a very senior uh, expert mission leader. And he said to Chinese local leader, he said, no, no, no. This is not useful if you look for country in Japan, rural. Not useful. Because look for Guizhou is very poor. Guizhou was very poor. 1990 very, very poor. And he said that you should understand that in 1950s, 1960s, when the Japanese rural area and how the Japanese rural areas developed from 96 to 70. So this, and he actually prepared a very big document with photos and everything. And, and he made a presentation and discussion with Chinese local officials that the whole Japanese rural area had been developed during the 1960s and 1970s. And the whole the rural people built the toilet, built the kitchens, all this very simple, very, very simple. So, and then, and a discussion with the village leaders, with the village leaders and the county leaders was very interesting because they said, oh, this is very useful, it's very cheaper, materials, very cheaper, everything. And, and, and it, because in the, in the all Japanese uh, project in China, you see a very similar type, <coughs> very different from, from what Japanese project county do in Africa. Currently, and I, you know, there are many, many projects doing that, you can training programs and everything, you know, you see the training program that people see together, very like German projects, you know, and then you are mining, uh, doing a lot of gender trainings and everything. It's very different. And I was also speaking with, uh, and this is also similar to the Koika, the Koika project. The Koika project, I was in the one project, my project, neighbor of Koika in the city province in Tanzania. So I visited also Koika. And uh, the team leader, I said, wow, oh, this team looks like German team leader, you know, and he, he talked about all different things. I said, why, you, why, why didn't you tell African friends how the road, how the rural road, village road was built in 1970s in South Korea? And I said, I know that. I know how it was built. It's very different from what you're telling your friend. And there was no discussion about this uh, gender issues and parties. No, no, because you know, you know, you, you, you organize farmers and you ask farmers to subsidy material, you tell them to do it. If you don't do it, you have to do it. You know, this is the way. You have to tell the truth for this. And the, the gap between the experiences, uh, what Jekka and the Koyaka exercise in the region in the country and in the region is different from what you are doing in other regions, you know. And so this, these are the ways I'm, you know, I was thinking how, well, we need to, we need to look at, we need to look at the developable uh, cooperation uh, within the region, you know, lessons, experiences, how, why it may really affect uh, when the 30 years uh, JK in China. And we, uh, I was telling the Thomas, because China has been the largest recipient country since 1978. Japanese was the first, almost for after, immediate after the UN. And the Japanese came, because 1978, uh, our leader, Deng Xiaoping, Japan. So that was the time when the ODA started. And we need, we need to tap up that experience over the last 30 years. And we don't understand this. We don't have any writing, document, nothing in terms of politics. 
And this is also similar to, 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 uh, to Germany. And then Germany is the second largest donor, 30 years to China. Germany is first for a long time. And uh, we, don't, we don't understand this. We have a lot of things in the past. But we cannot share with, with other, uh, with other you know, programs. Therefore, I, I would use this opportunity uh, to to suggest that um, uh, JICA uh, Research Institute here and uh, with Chinese Research Institute together, and we need to begin to, to, to look at this uh, with the perspective of global governments and look at the experiences of uh, what JICA did in China, how this collaboration brought growth and uh, development to the country and the whole to use similar things to other countries. I will take this a global uh, public, <coughs> you know, not just like the one Jam mm, Japanese ODAs, special ex experiences lessons, but rather take as one of the global public goods. So we don't know this, you know, we don't understand what does it mean this. Uh, it means that um, it's a country specific context or it's a, it's a, it's a universal Utility. So we, we have no idea about this. You know, whether it's a subject to the country ownership or country capacity or just entirely the cultural transferring. So we, we have no idea for this how it works. But but it works very well. You know, it works so well, and uh, and it, we we have no any writing for this. We have no any writing for this. So I would uh, again to use this opportunity to 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 suggest that maybe um, JICA Research Institute could also start similar. We could also uh, look joint uh, program. We could convince our government, China, uh, Japan, Korea, uh, through our existing uh, China, Japan, Korea um, collaboration mechanism, official one. There, was, there is some kind of official but so now official things, we could think about uh, joint program, like joint MGT program. Because what you said that, that your program is uh, is mainly financed by the BMZ, and we we could start this joint funding. You know, joint funding. This is very new because we have to create something. You know, not always talk about differences. But different, you know, the you know the uh, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. You know, we have a lot of problems, you know. And uh, it's sometimes joking, you know, really joking. <laughs> it's not necessary. But we have to do it. We can start this area to look for the joint funding. I think it's very possible, very, very possible for this. So I guess thank you for your Thank you very much.